Hello. Thank you for watching this video on your own. We are going to Versailles today, which takes an entire day. There's so much to see. So today I may be talking about Chapter 8, Cross-Channel Shopping. Cross-Channel Shopping is when a customer buys in many different locations and marketing trends are really going after cross-channel shopping these days. So, a customer will buy at a brick and mortar store. They'll buy from online retailers. They can buy from used clothing stores and mix everything together. They get a lot of information from social media, Facebook. What else? Instagram. There's so many ways now for customers to shop and marketers must be on top of all of them. Research shows that traditional forms of marketing, like in newspapers, radio, television, special events, is losing ground to digital marketing. I think everybody pretty much knows this already. Social networking, blogs, email, are fast overtaking the traditional forms of marketing, or they've overtaken them already. So brick and mortar retailing is the traditional type of shopping where you go to a store and go shopping. This is the Bon Marche in Seattle, Washington. People still really like to go to stores, and there are some really positive aspects to shopping at a brick and mortar store. The store can give you an experience that you it's not open 24-7 like online shopping. You can only see the product while you're in the store and there's limited space to stock sizes and colors. How many times have you gone to the store and found something and they don't have your size or your color? I'm sure you could think about other issues about why going to a store is a negative experience maybe from your own experience. San Francisco has a history of some wonderful stores downtown near Union Square. This is the Emporium on Market Street. It was on Market Street. It's now been replaced by Westfield Mall. So you can see the same arch, it's the same building, but it's totally different. Instead of being one store, it's filled with many, many different stores. It's much more interactive. It has a movie theater. It's so changed from in the Emporium, which closed, I think, in the 1970s. So e-commerce is really the new form of marketing, not even so new anymore. So there are many positive things about it. It's cheaper. The cost per square foot doesn't even uh, compute compared to brick and mortar stores. So by saving so much money, the product can be uh, offered at a lower price. Also, online shoppers interact more with the e-retailer. So product reviews can actually be very helpful to the retailer because they know what the customer is thinking and what they need. There really is very little overhead and marketing costs. And because of this, very small companies can compete with very large brands. More and more retailers are looking into multi-channel marketing. So reaching out to the customer by doing everything, having a brick and mortar store, engaging in e-commerce, mobile commerce, social media, all these things are happening now and creating multi-channel marketing. And all this kind of marketing is focused on the consumer and the consumer can interact with all these different categories. You can shop anywhere. When you're out on your phone, on your tablet, this is probably the least likely. 
And finally, omnichannel. So omnichannel is viewing the experience through the eyes of your customer. Omni means as in all, complete and integrated. So it's a completely integrated channel. And it's viewing the shopping experience of the customer as being streamlined and at the same high quality if they're in the store, if they're on your website, no matter how they shop, they're going to still have the same experience. So it's seamless, integrated, and consistent. In the past, before Omnichannel was really important, a store's product and their online product might be totally different and not at the same quality and level. So the marketers and the retailers weren't really considering the customer experience. So Omnichannel anticipates that your customer is going to be using more than one channel. So they all have to be at the same top quality. So here's multi-channel and omni-channel where experience becomes so important. And experience is a really big catch word now in marketing, the customer experience. Terminology having to do with digital marketing. The first is them you'd have to sit through these commercials. The next is poll marketing. This is a type of marketing where you entice the customer to seek out your marketing. And this is very important in cross-channel shopping. You make the customer seek out the product. And the strategy is to create awareness and create the brand the visibility of your product on the internet. Which one's better, push or pull? You actually need both. You need push to reach out to the customer and so they become familiar with the name of your product. Once that's established, you need pull to attract them to look at your internet presence and your product. So they're both necessary. I'm now going to talk about the four different types of advertising. Informational, persuasive, comparative, and image advertising. And I'll go over each one individually. The first is information advertising. This type of advertising you provide a lot of information to the customer. So a lot of verbiage, giving a lot for the customer to read. This was an important type of advertising uh, maybe 100 years ago. If you look at old magazine magazines, you see that they have written a lot of information. So this is a car advertisement, and they're having a lot of written information about the product. The next is persuasive advertising. You're trying to persuade the customer to buy a product. So for this tactic, maybe you're going to use a celebrity. I mean, who wouldn't want to use a product if a celebrity claims that they use it? So that's persuasive advertising. The next is comparative advertising. This is when you show your product and you show another product, and you talk about why your product is so much better than your competitor. And the fourth type is image advertising. This type of advertising enhances an organization's image and creates importance to the target market. So this is an example. This is a Tommy Hilfiger ad. So he's not trying to sell an individual product here. He's not trying to persuade you or give you a lot of information. 
he's trying to create this, this image using all these different people, kind of creating an aura. So many companies use image advertising. I could think of Abercrombie and Fitch with all their imagery. J. Crew was creating an image. Uh, Ralph Lauren. And you can probably think of others as well that create an image. So a little more terminology about marketing products. So features and benefits. A feature is a distinctive quality or characteristic of a product, but a benefit is the advantages of owning that product. So here is an example. Hermes Birkin handbag, and this is Lady Jane Birkin holding the handbag name for her. So the features of this bag, the distinctive qualities or characteristics, is it's handmade in very high quality leather. It has a gold plated lock and key. So those are wonderful things, but the benefits are even more important. How owning one makes you feel. And not only how you feel and what other people think about you, when they see this bag, obviously you're extremely successful. So that's a benefit of this product. You're like a movie star. The next term is big data. So that's a collection of data sets so large and complex that it becomes difficult to process on hand database management tools or traditional data processing applications. So how does this relate to fashion marketing? So the relationship is that data collection is so important now to marketing and so much information is taken from data and a lot of it comes from your charge card use. This information is used to predict future sales. Big data analytics is it now applied at every stage of the retail process. So when you think about positions in retailing like being a buyer, so much of the job now is analyzing this data. So big data can be used to work out what the popular products will be by predicting trends. What's been bought in the past can, be, can predict what customers will buy in the future. You can also forecast where the demand will be for products. You can optimize pricing to have a more competitive edge. You can identify the customers who will be interested in a product and work out the best way to approach them, take their money, and decide what to sell to them next. So all this data now is used by people who are working in retail. The buyers, the upper management, all now have this data and use it to plan their future lines. The next term is fast fashion. So this is a very common word used a lot. And this is a quote from a fashion conference in Copenhagen, Copenhagen Fashion Summit 2014. Putting a human face on the real cost of cheap clothes is the fastest route to a more sustainable industry. So sustainability is becoming a very important factor in the fashion industry. Uh, in the past, there weren't many jobs in sustainability, but it is a growing area. So there are multiple meanings to this word fast fashion. It can mean a product that comes to market very, very quickly. Often it is a knockoff. So what we see at the Eau Couture shows will be very quickly knocked off and sold at a cheaper price. That could be called fast fashion. But by putting a face on this fast fashion, like what is the actual cost of it? 
So this picture shows a customer who bought a dress for $50. You know, pretty cheap. Forever 21, maybe you could get the dress for $19. But this is showing the person who sewed the dress, often somebody underage, working in a, a bad factory with bad conditions, only earned 60 cents to make that garment. This is a really great video. It's a full-length movie, and it's available on YouTube. It's called The True Cost. It's the true cost of fast fashion, and it will show you the effect of the cheap prices that we are enjoying in the United States and how this really comes about. So Walmart is a big provider of fast fashion to the United States and to the world now, as well as really cheap products. These are some reasons why maybe you should think twice about shopping at Walmart. Walmart lies about the working conditions of their employees and factory workers in their advertising. They treat their employees and fashion workers unethically while making their products. First of all, they do not pay a living wage. This means that the workers, even working full shifts, don't make enough money to live. They find ways to avoid laws that protect employee rights. They usually employ people part-time. A lot of their workers are part-time. By doing this, they don't have to provide medical insurance or other benefits. Since their employees can't afford, because they make so much money, to live, they encourage their employees to live on welfare. So they're really taking advantage of the services that are provided for people. They actually threaten employees to wish to, to form unions, to protect themselves. They discourage employees from talking to each other. And they threaten employees with layoffs if they talk about their true conditions. So to learn more about Walmart, there's another good movie. And you can watch it on YouTube. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video.